ಓಂ ಅಜ್ಞಾನ ತಿಮಿರಾಂದ ಜ್ಞಾನಾಂಜನ ಶಲಾಘೆಯ ಚಕ್ಷುರಮೃತ ಮೇನ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುವೇ ನಮಃ ನಾರಾಯಣ ನಮಸ್ಕೃತ್ಯ ನರಂಚೈವಾನುರುತ್ತಮ ದೇವಿ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ವ್ಯಾಸ ತಥೋಜಯ ಮಧೀರೇತ್ ಶೃಣ್ವತಾಂ ಸ್ವಗತ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪುಣ್ಯಶ್ರವಣ ಕೀರ್ತನ ಹೃದಯಂ ತಸ್ತೋಹಿ ಅಭದ್ರಾನಿ ವಿಧೂನೋತಿ ಸುಹೃತ್ ಸತಾ ನಷ್ಟಪ್ರಾಯೇಶ್ವ ಭದ್ರೇಶು ನಿತ್ಯಂ ಭಾಗವತ ಸೇವೆಯ ಭಗವತಿ ಉತ್ತಮ ಶ್ಲೋಕೆ ಭಕ್ತೆ ಭವತಿ ನೈಷ್ಠಿಕೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣಾಯ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ದೇವಕೀ ನಂದನಾಯ ಚ ನಂದ ಗೋಪಕುಮಾರಾಯ ಗೋವಿಂದಾಯ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ so third chapter uh, titled pure devotion service the change of heart it is only pure devotion service that will transform the heart that is the theme and also <clears throat> it teaches only how bhakti alone can you know bhakti in the heart of the devotee alone can transform our heart so we can become a devotee only by the mercy of a devotee so that is another theme that will be covered in this chapter yeah so let's start uh, the chapter reading uh, shri shuka uvacha shri shuka uvacha evam eta nigaditam evam eta nigaditam prishtavan yad bhavan mama ಪೃಷ್ಟವಾನ್ ಯದ್ ಭವಾನ್ ಮಮಾಷು ಮನೀಷಿ ಶ್ರೀ ಸುಖದೇವ್ ಗೋಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಸೆಡ್ ಮಹಾರಾಜ ಪರೀಕ್ಷಿತ್ ಆಸ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಇನ್ಕ್ವೈರ್ಡ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಮೀ as to the duty of the intelligent man who is on the threshold of death so i have answered you hmm. so here <clears throat> so he was referring to the previous chapter where he explained about uh, worshiping parmatma within the heart so now he will further explain because maharaj parikshit is the king and also is very intelligent because he is making very good inquiries about the purpose of life especially for one who is about to die so based on all his inquiries which are all pointing to absolute truth so sukadev goswami is praising him yeah please read cello highlighted one in human society all over the world there are millions and billions of men and women and almost all of them are less intelligent because they have very little knowledge of spirit soul almost almost all of them have a wrong conception of life for they identify themselves with the gross and subtle material bodies which they are not in fact they may be situated in different high and low positions in the estimation of human society but one should know definitely that unless one inquires about his own self beyond the body and the mind all his activities in human life are total failures therefore out of thousands and thousands of men one may inquire about his spirit self and thus consult the revealed scriptures like vedanta shastras bhagavad gita and shrimad bhagavatam but in spite of reading and hearing such scriptures unless one is in touch with a realized spiritual master he cannot actually realize the real nature of self etc and out of thousands and hundreds of thousands of men someone may know what lord krishna is in fact hmm. so these are verses from bhagavad gita where it says manushyanam sahasreshu kaschid yatat siddhay out of thousands of men one tries to inquire about absolute truth and out of many such men one man or woman uh, one will actually understand the absolute truth or krishna uh, so because it requires real intelligence what is real intelligence 
real intelligence is to understand that we are not this physical body but we are this spirit soul within this body so because even though one may be very very materially intelligent so this is actually true intelligence true intelligence is spiritual intelligence means one understands his position as uh, as a as a uh, as a as a soul not as a body until one understands that you know one is considered less intelligent hmm? even though one may be very very rich big philosopher or you know very famous so that's why very few people are really intelligent to, you know in this verse it says in purport says uh, very few people really inquire about purpose of life uh, you know because the real thing is even though one may be very rich or you know very famous or has you know uh, all the things that he wanted in this life ultimately when he dies he will lose everything either he gives up or things will give him up in this lifetime so it is not worthy uh, so any amount of material intelligence is useless unless one understands that his position as a spirit soul yeah so now sugadev goswami talks about various things that people in this world worship to get different fulfillments because he is now introducing the uh, worship of demigods what worship of demigods will give what it doesn't give uh, what people do to get different things in this material world brahma varchasa kamastu प्रजा काम प्रजापति देवी माया तो श्री काम तेजस कामो 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 अदि साधको विषम आयुष कामो स्विंगुदेव पुष्टि काम इलम यजे प्रतिष्ठा काम पुषो रोदसी लोकमातर कामो 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 आधिपच्य काम यजेता परमेस्तिना विद्यास्तु गिरीशा दाम्पज्याम सती so this lists all the demigods and what they give <laughs> yeah please read anyone
one who decides to be absorbed in the impersonal Brahma Jyoti effulgence should worship the master of the Vedas, Lord Brahma or Brihaspati, the learned priest. One who desires powerful sex should worship the heavenly king Indra and one who desires good progeny should worship the great progenitors called the Prajapatis. One who desires good fortune should worship Durga Devi, the superintendent of the material world. One desiring to be very powerful should worship fire and one who aspires only after money should worship the Vasus. One, one should worship the Rudra incarnations of Lord Shiva if he wants to be a great hero. One who wants a large stock of brains should worship Aditi. One who desires to attain the heavenly planets should worship the sons of Aditi. One who desires a worldly kingdom should worship Vishwadeva. And one who wants to be popular with the general mass of population should worship the Sadhya demigod. One who desires a long span of life should worship the demigods known as the Ashwini Kumaras. And a person desiring a strongly built body should worship the earth. One who desires stability in his post should worship the horizon and the earth combined. One who desires to be beautiful should worship the beautiful residents of the Gandharva planet. And one who desires a good wife should worship the Apsaras and the Urvashi and the Urvasi society girls of the heavenly kingdom. One who desires domination over others should worship Lord Brahma, the head of the universe. One who desires tangible fame should worship the personality of Godhead. And one who desires a good bank balance should worship the demigod Varuna. If one desires to be a greatly learned man, he should worship Lord Shiva. And if one desires a good marital relation, he should worship the chaste goddess Uma, the wife of Lord Shiva. Hmm. Sorry. Krishna. Yeah. All the... Then we never heard, right? I, I mean, I never heard Prabhuji. So many things, so many demigods are written, but uh, usually I never knew all this. <laughs> Yeah. This is the whole list. List, yeah. <laughs> this is you know generally what people do. It's not that this is the only method that will be revealed in the next verses. Okay. Generally, this is the these are the people that you know people in this world go go after. Yeah. There are different modes of worship for different persons desiring success in particular subjects. The conditioned soul living within the purview of the material world cannot be an expert in every type of materially enjoyable asset, but one can have considerable influence over a particular matter by worshipping a particular demigod as mentioned above. Yeah. So these are, you know, also these are, within these demigods, again, there is, some are in the mode of passion, some are based on the desire. Desire can be in mode of ignorance, passion, or goodness. Uh, but these are all lower modes only. Uh, even goodness mm -hmm. can be there, but uh, all of them are uh, within the realm of modes. Right? So, mm -hmm. this is definitely not what uh, devotees aspire for. Devotees But one small question, Prabhuji. Uh, so, uh, like... People who materialistic people also like they have one thing or the other in these all opulences mentioned above, mm -hmm. but they don't know whom to worship exactly. Uh, still, they get all these opulences. It's because of their past karma. Lord is sanctioning them, or in previous life they might have worshipped these demigods. Uh, yeah. Like yeah, based on our karma, we get what we deserve in the, from the past life. So that is called prarabdha karma. Mm -hmm. When they worship now, they will accumulate for future. Future. Right? If you work yeah. hard, you earn money, you save for future. So similarly, if you worship these demigods, that will accumulate mm -hmm. as your future karma. That's future. The good or bad karma, both are bad. Because, mm -hmm. because to enjoy that good karma, again, you have to come back. So, mm -hmm. Yes, Prabhu. Yeah, got it. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhu. Yeah. Hare Krishna. Dharmarda Uttama Shlokam Dharmarda Uttama Shlokam Tantu Tanvam Pitrin Yajet Tantu Tanvam Pitrin Yajet Rakshakama Punyajanan Rakshakama Punyajanan Ojaskamo Marudganan Oh, oh, yeah. 
one yeah. should worship lord vishnu or his devotee for spiritual advancement in knowledge and for protection of hereditary hereditary and advancement of dynasty one should worship the various demigods hmm. one who does not desire anything material should worship lord vishnu because he is above the three modes yes the path of religion entails making progress on the path of spiritual advancement Ulti uh, ultimately reviving the eternal relationship with lord vishnu in his impersonal effulgence his localized parmatma feature and uh, ultimately his personal feature by spiritual advancement in knowledge mm. so this is a, you know gradual approach many people you know go through dharma ardha kama moksha that is how they uh, they go through but luckily uh, you know for us we are directly given the path of bhakti so that is a you know shortcut process for us that we are following uh, but many people just go through this cycle of dharma ardha kama moksha and again that moksha is only material liberation that's not highest goal of life real goal of life is to achieve love of god right it's not liberation what is liberation and what is uh, what is what we of we are after our prema what is the difference i think we discussed this some time ago what is the question prabhu ji what is the difference between liberation and bhakti achieving pure bhakti any example just uh -huh. a thought like liberation is still kind of like you know you are expecting something wherein bhakti is kind of without any expectation love towards god hmm. that is from desire perspective from the result perspective when a person is liberated what is he liberated from yeah it is yeah, it is bhakti is better because hmm? we see it is when then we don't we we experience all good like the feelings everything but we dedicate it to god mm -hmm. what that is self, that is bhakti mm -hmm. but uh, it's very the other one is very hard because we have to go against the wave and try very hard to stop our feelings everything mm. yeah th that is the process you are saying the process wise you know achieving liberation is difficult than practicing bhakti yeah but in terms of what exactly what is what is it that one is liberated from material existence prabhu ji material body existence uh, one the duties can, one can still duty. have material body i mean what do you mean by material existence the duties prabhu ji material duties mm, possible but uh it, it is something to, do with the modes. something to do with the modes getting to the shuddha uh, like uh, pure goodness mode of pure goodness mode of pure goodness is actually bhakti it's not possible with liberation it's little higher than that actually okay let me add uh, so liberation means liberation from the influence of the modes of material nature that that is what it means literally the so even an impersonalist can be liberated when a person merges into brahma jyoti or impersonal brahman when that state is also called liberation it is just that for example for us when we are entangled in the material world entangled means entangled is not just you know tying physically our our subtle body is entangled with desires right to in various ways influenced by the modes of material nature right we act in various ways because we are influenced by modes in different ways we see some sweet our tongue gets you know salivated because we are influenced by the modes 
liberation means a person who is not influenced by the modes means he will not be disturbed by uh, sukha dukkha man apman or you know hot cold he is just completely free from the influence of material nature material nature cannot influence him that is called the state of liberation you can achieve that in jnana yoga dhyana yoga or bhakti yoga right any any path will give you liberation but liberation does not give bhakti towards god liberation is like we are all in a diseased condition right for example one may have one may have uh, you know uh, jaundice he cannot taste anything uh, any sweet also tastes sour right but liberation means getting relieved of the diseased condition of the body right suppose i am very sick i can't even move around my body is very hot and i have jaundice for example liberation means getting relieved of your diseased condition because you are influenced by the modes you are out of the influence of the modes in modes are like you know holding a, holding you up like uh, like a person in prison liberation means getting out of that Full soul is liberated it is not under the influence of the three modes anymore right you see the picture in bhagavad gita in the three modes one person is you know tied by three women with the various ropes that is called conditioned soul when a person is liberated all those ties all the three modes are not anymore influencing him but bhakti is not just getting relieved from the diseased condition which is the you know influence under the being under the influence of the modes but also to be engaged in the right state as the servant of god to actually lovingly serve the lord to establish a loving relation with god that is bhakti it's not so liberation means from negative axis you come to zero right you are at zero level now bhakti means from zero you come to positive which is you are there, that's why it, it has the ananda element but you know mukti has only sat a little bit of chit but no ananda bhakti means satchid ananda so bhakti includes mukti bhakti is a super set of mukti bhakti one who is liberated you know as one advances in devotion service when he is fully liberated not only that the influence of modes is not there on the person but also he is lovingly engaged in the service of the lord right so it is coming from negative to zero to positive is that clear yes prabhu that's great very good so prabhu ji one question then why would there be option for liberation because there is no ananda so still there is an option for liberation yeah ananda is going to be there but that ananda is uh, you know like thousand times of material ananda but mm. ananda in bhakti uh, is is sandranand visheshatma in nectar of devotion it is mentioned as sandranand it's it's like very condensed happiness so bhakti as one progresses in devotion service the ananda level that one achieves is is like million times more than what is achieved in mukti so that's why there is no comparison that's why mukti happiness is negligibly negligible compared to that of uh, you know bhakti that's why mm. it's considered almost zero but actually it is much thousand times better than any happiness you get in material life thank you thank you prabhuji it it has happiness otherwise why people go after mukti so much so many mm. people go to himalayas and practice tapasya for all their life why would they do that if it doesn't give you that happiness so it gives happiness but the happiness in the service of lord is considered millions of times higher mm. 
Right. Any other questions? Hare Krishna Prabhuji, that was Pranam Jakshila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna Mataji. Prabhuji, um, so can you explain about um, achieving mukti while in the physical body? Achieving mukti uh, is possible. Um, so there is a you know beautiful verse about that. Um, so a devotee can achieve liberation uh, within this body uh, when he is completely 100% engaged in pure devotion service. Hmm? Mm -hmm. so, mukti doesn't necessarily mean one has yeah. to leave his body. So one can achieve, uh, you know, like, for example, Srila Prabhupada, 100% of his intelligence and mind was focused on serving Lord in various ways. Uh, so that is that is real liberation. Hmm? That is that is bhakti, where one is hundred percent engaged. So one need not give up his body. Uh, it's like you know, if you are in touch with fire, you are as good as you know, uh, or some some object is in touch with fire. So when we when we are hundred percent in touch with Krishna through our mind and intelligence. Uh, hmm. We are as good as uh, Krishna in terms of you know being liberated, right? So Krishna is hundred percent Satchidananda. So one person who is hundred percent engaged in the service of Krishna is also equally uh, like he is also liberated. In quality, he is same. He exhibits the same quality, even though he is in the material body. Okay, that is the understanding? Uh, yeah. <clears throat> So there are so many examples of uh, you know such devotees like Sukadev Goswami, hmm. Ambarish Maharaj. He was hundred percent engaged. Right? Prahlad Maharaj. Hmm. Even as a child, he was totally absorbed in service of Krishna. Hmm? Hmm. He was always remembering Lord Narayana. Hmm. So that one can be fully liberated while uh, being in the material body. But that is only for the bhaktas, right, Prabhuji? Can that happen for jnanis and... Uh... Jnani can be, can achieve mukti in this life while while in this body. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it is possible if, in, for any practitioner. So this kundalini, uh, mm. right, all those practices, they do the same, basically. Physical, mm. sometimes some of these are mechanical process. Some of them are through yoga. Mm. Yeah. So, <clears throat> but the main factor is after this body, where do you go? Right. Mm. So if you are if you are a devotee, you don't need to worry, as mentioned by Lord Krishna in eighth chapter. All right. So mm. when for Arjuna Krishna says, for you, you don't worry because you are always conscious of me. I will take care of your destination. Mm. For a non-devotee who is dependent on his own strength mm. for him he has to leave at a specific time specific uh, you know periods like in Uttarayana only he has to live only during daytime mm. uh, and Muhurta all those things are there that's why many people try to like many um, uh, you know yogis etc they try to leave their body through their you know um, Chakra at the on the top of the head. Sahasrara. Mm. Sahasra chakra, yeah. So at a very specific time. Mm. Yeah. To achieve liberation. So again, that they achieve only liberation, not bhakti, right? Yeah, they'll emerge into Brahman. They'll emerge into Brahman, yeah. That is again a temporary position because in Brahman there is no engagement. And mm. soul by nature is. Seeking so, service. Mm, yes. Right? So, Jivera mm. Swarupa hai. Swarupa is seeking service. Yes. Because it is, it is not positioned to sorrow. Mm. It's not a stable state of uh, existence. Whether it is a million, million years or, you know, at some point it has to again return 
to engage in service either materially or something so that's what happens again they can be influenced by material mood and you know they might just get hung up here in the material world got it prabhu ji thank you so much yeah hari राज्य कामो मनुन देवान राज्य कामो मनुन देवान निर्स्तिं त्वा अभिचरन यजे नित्रिं काम कामो यजे सोमम काम कामो यजे सोमम काम पुरुषम परम काम पुरुषम परम हम्म Yeah, please read. One who desires domination over kingdom or an ex- empire should worship the manus. One who desires victory over an enemy should worship the demons. And one who desires sense gratification should worship the moon. But one who desires nothing of material enjoyment should worship the supreme personality of god it mm-hmm. one who doesn't want anything in the material world he should worship vishnu or krishna for a liberated person all the enjoyments listed above are considered to be absolutely useless only those who are conditioned by the material modes of life external energy are captivated by different types of material enjoyment did In you understand this line whatever we discussed is you know summarized here see what 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 is a who is a person who is entangled or you know conditioned or non liberated a person mm-hmm. who is entangled in the modes of material nature yeah. of it what is the definition yeah go ahead mataji in other words the transcendentalist has no material desires to be fulfilled whereas the materialistic materialistic has all types of desires to be fulfilled the lord has proclaimed that the materialist who desires material enjoyment and thus seek of seek the favor of different demigods as abo mentioned are not in control of their sense and and go so give themselves to nonsense one should therefore not desire any sort of material enjoyment being sensible even even though en- enough to worship the supreme personality of godhead the leaders of nonsense nonsensical persons are still more nonsensical because they preach o- openly and foolishly that one can worship any form of demigod and get the same result this sort of preaching is not only against the teachings of bhagavad gita or those of shrimad bhagavatam but is also foolish just yes it is foolish to claim that uh, that with with the purchase of any travel ticket one may reach the same destination yeah <clears throat> we cannot go to the so main problem is leaders of the you know leaders of materialistic people because they themselves teach things like yato mat tato pat right you follow any path and you go go to the same destination if you buy a ticket to a place you only go to that place you won't go to any other place so so prabhupad is uh, you know saying that people preach all kinds of things in name of spirituality and uh, unfortunately both the speaker or the leader as well as the followers both will uh, lose their opportunity to go back to godhead yeah please read for fulfillment of material desires one may worship the supreme lord but the result of such worship is different as will be explained in the next verse generally the lord does not fulfill anyone's material desires for the sense enjoyment but he 
awards such benedictions to worship of the Lord, for they ultimately come to the point of not desiring material enjoyment. The conclusion is that one must minimize the desires for material enjoyment and for this one should worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is who is described here as param or beyond anything material. Mm. Conclusion is that one must minimize the material desires. Uh, so if one wants to, one desires material material desires, um, what should we do if we have some material desires? We want something, you know, either a yeah. better job or better salary or better home, better wife or, or, you know, whatever you have, what do you do? What do we do? It's, it's, it's natural. Like, I mean, everybody has material desires. That's why we are here. So, pray. Hmm? Krishna. Pray. pray to Krishna. Yeah, pray to honestly pray to Krishna. Don't need to hide before Krishna. We can this is what I am today, but Krishna, maybe by your you know uh, by your purification one day I will give up, but this is what I have right now. It is okay. It is perfectly all right. Instead of going to elsewhere, it is better to go to Krishna for um, like for example. Prabhuji, actually, my da daughter, uh, she writes no letter to Krishna and keep it in prayer room. Mm -hmm. Very nice. <laughs> that, uh, yeah, my, my mother should not scold me. <laughs> I want this doll, all this stuff. Uh, Very nice, interesting. So, <clears throat> if um, so, if we uh, if we have any desire, it is better to go to Krishna than to any demigod. Reason is, it's like, for example, if you have some money, you go to a shop and you ask anything, you get anything. Anything, because shopkeeper doesn't see what, whether it is good for you or not. Right? If you ask for a cigarette packet, he will give you a cigarette packet. He doesn't mind, because for him it is just business. But, Krishna, if you go to Krishna with your material desire, he will not immediately give you what you want. Because Krishna is our father. If you go and ask your father or something, he will make sure it is good for you. Right? So first he will take care of purifying you and then give you. So it may be some, you know, there will be some delay in getting what you want. But as a father, he when he gives you, it is in your best interest. That much we know. So even if it takes some extra time, you will not be entangled by what you desire from Krishna. So it is better to desire from Krishna. So the verse next next verse. Now it already described all the demigod worship, what you get by what when you pray. No next verse summarizes actually who should one worship right so let's read that this is a very famous verse you can memorize it akama sarva kamo va akama sarva kamo va moksha kama udaradhi moksha kama udaradhi tivrena bhakti yogena tivrena bhakti yogena Yajeta Purusham Param. Yajeta Purusham Param. Please read. A person who has broader intelligence, whether he is full of all material desires, without any material desires or desiring liberation, must by all means worship the Supreme Whole, the personality of Godhead. Three categories are mentioned here. Broader intelligence means if you are really smart, means if you are using your intelligence correctly, you know, purely, uh, spiritual intelligence, whether he be full of material desires, hmm? full of material desire, without any material desire, or desiring liberation, three levels, right? Akama, Akama is mentioned first. Akama means 
kama means full of desires akama means no no material, no material desire means a devotee a devotee is an akama ideal ideal devotee not every devotee but ideal devotee sarva kama sarva kama means all desires you have all sorts all sorts of desires or moksha kama even desiring liberation is also a kama or desire so if you are desiring moksha liberation again this is not devotee this is the people other than devotees who are after liberation moksha kama whoever you may be right uh, with you know you are considered udaradhi adhi means intelligence udara means very intelligent you know broadly intelligent right so what you should do the process is teevrena bhakti yogena with great force means with sincere heart put all your best effort what you should do bhakti yogena perform bhakti yoga to who yajeta purusham param to the worshipable supreme lord purusham param ultimate supreme personality of god so whether you have no desires or full of desires or you know desiring liberation in fact uh, vishwanath chakravarti takur says why the order is like this the order is the best is akama one may think uh, moksha kama is you know better than sarva kama generally you have you know you are desiring after moksha versus if you are desiring of all the material things in this world people may consider in general moksha kama is better positioned but vishnu chakravarti thakur says no that's not the case the best is akama second best is sarva kama third best or the worst of the three is moksha kama that is why that is that is the order in which this verse is praising those words akama is the best if you have no desires and you worship supreme lord for pleasure of lord that is best sarva kama is second best you may have all the desires but you are not going after demigods but you are going after krishna so that will purify your heart and ultimately you will achieve the same whether you are akama or sarva kama you achieve the same akama devotee is prahlad maharaj sarva kama devotee is dro maharaj in terms of categorization pralad is superior to dhruva moksha kama is the worst of all because you are desiring liberation to merge into the supreme lord instead of serving the supreme lord so because you have a specific desire to take advantage of supreme lord it is considered the lowest yeah please read in the previous chapter it has been stated that the bhakti yoga is the ultimate goal of the uh, both karma yoga and gnana yoga and in the same way in this chapter it is emphatically declared that the bhakti yoga the ultimate goal of the different varieties of worship of the different demigods bhakti vega thus bhakti yoga thus being the supreme means of the self realization is recommended here everyone must therefore seriously take up the methods of bhakti yoga even though one aspires for material material enjoyment or liberation from the material bondage akama is one of the uh, akama is one who has no material desires a living being naturally being the part of the a part of the parcel of the supreme whole purushottama has his has as a his nat- natural function to serve the supreme being just as a part and parcel of the body or the limbs of the body are naturally made meant to serve the complete body desireless means therefore not to be inert like the stone but to be conscious of one's actual position and does desire satisfaction only from the supreme lord hmm. so akama means it's not lack of kama is actually a negative connotation it means desiring for one's self satisfaction akama means 
desiring for the service of lord is not uh, kama it's a kama okay? so that is perfectly all right one because soul is full of emotions the soul is but it is all pure emotions when we are liberated and when we are you know uh, in performing pure devotion service we desire the service of lord you know uh, like you can see the example of life of uh, prabhu pad right till the till the last day of his death he was dictating the you know bhagavatam purports even though he was not eating for 30 days in the last 30 days of his life he would continue to dictate until his last breath so that is that is his commitment to the lord that is akama so he has the desire to serve lord but nothing for himself yeah please read this means that one should feel happy only by experiencing the happiness of the supreme lord this intuition intuition of the living being is sometimes manifested even during the condition stage of the living being in the material world and such intuition is expressed in the manner of altruism philanthropy socialism communism etc by the undeveloped minds of the less intelligent person Hmm. Yeah. So, because people are attracted to various things, you know, their intelligence is attracted in various directions: altruism, philanthropy, socialism, communism. By undeveloped minds of less intelligent or of less intelligent persons. Yeah. The gopis love the Lord without any return, and this is the perfect exhibition of the akama spirit, the kama spirit. or the desires for one's own satisfaction is is fully exhibited in the material world whereas the spirit of akama is fully exhibited in the spiritual world hmm. the spirit of akama is fully exhibited in the spiritual world yeah so in spiritual world everybody is just thinking about krishna's pleasure nothing else Yeah. Thoughts of becoming one with the Lord or being merged in the Brahma Jyoti can also be the exhibition of Kama spirit. If they are desires for one's own satisfaction to be free from the material miseries, a pure devotee does not want to liberation so that he may be relieved from the miseries of life. even without so called liberation a pure devotee is aspirant for the satisfaction of the lord influenced by the the kama spirit arjuna declined to fight in the kurukshetra battlefield because he because he wanted to save his relatives for his own satisfaction but being the pure devotee he agreed to fight on the instructions of the lord because he he came to his senses and realized that the satisfaction of the lord at the cost of own satisfaction was his primary duty thus he became a kama that is the perfect stage of the perfect living being one may be uh, you know have a many desires but if one approaches lord he will become a kama so arjuna initially was thinking about his own satisfaction how can i kill my relatives but as as in as soon as he got in touch with krishna and heard his teachings he became a kama so even for us also we can think when you know we are full of desires we should reach krishna or his devotees express those and that way we get freed from those desires that is the practical lesson for us right if we don't reach we will continue to live in our own dream world Hmm. Udradid means one who has the broader outlook. People with the desires for material enjoyment worship small demigods, and such intelligence is condemned in the Bhagavad Gita seven point twenty. As a harthajana, the intelligence of one who has lost his senses. Kama is the ester hirtagnana. You know, if intelligence is lost. Uh, such people are considered less intelligent 
right and they their intelligence is lost by the power of material desires kamai staiste kritagnana prapajyante anya devata what do they do because their intelligence is lost they worship anya devatas means other demigods but those who are devoted to me they worship me and, and everyone go ahead yeah and everyone whether an akama or sakama or moksha kama should worship the lord with a great experience this implies the bhakti yoga may be perfectly administered without any mixture of kama and gnana so one can whether you have whether you are akami sakama you have anything everybody can worship lord and get purified so it doesn't distinguish etavan eva yajatam etavan eva yajatam yatam ihani hres ihani sre yasodaya ihani sre yasodaya yasodaya achalo bhavo bhav tarvati achalo bhavo यद्भागवता संगता यद्भागवता संगता ट्रांसलेशन ऑल द डिफरेंट काइंड्स ऑफ वर्शिपर्स ऑफ मल्टी डेमीगॉड्स कैन अटेन द हाईएस्ट परफेक्शनल बेनिडिक्शन व्हिच इज स्पॉन्टेनियस अट्रैक्शन अनफ्लिंचिंगली फिक्स्ड अपॉन द सुप्रीम पर्सनालिटी ऑफ गॉड एंड ओनली बाय द एसोसिएशन ऑफ द प्योर डेविटी ऑफ द लॉर्ड whether you are worshipper of any demigod or anything for for that matter whether demigod or some baba or whatever by getting in touch with a pure devotee of lord one can become a servant of the lord so he can become unflinchingly fixed upon the supreme lord he will achieve so even if you are worshipper of various demigods if you have the fortune of coming in touch with a devotee you will come to bhakti right for example you consider your own life each of us how are we how did we come to devotion service mainly each of you can think about your own story right it is in all cases it is only because of a devotee's kindness mercy they have given their time for us correct or not yes prabhu yes prabhu ji yes prabhu ji other alternative whether it is some people might have read prabhupada books and became devotees again prabhupada is the influence many others may have engaged in various services or you know talk to some devotee but it is nevertheless it's always a devotee that brings you know krishna consciousness in our life it is a irrevocable fact uh, so even if we have so many desires uh, you know worship of demigods by coming in touch with a pure devotee one can achieve spontaneous attraction unflinchingly upon the supreme lord one can achieve that benediction a devotee gives that benediction because devotee prays for us and lord is generally obliged to fulfill the desire of his devotee through his mercy we get the devotion otherwise we are not qualified especially in kali yuga nobody is qualified to become a devotee <laughs> yeah it is because prabhupada prayed for you know all of us uh, you know the otherwise you can imagine how americans who don't know anything about our culture how they are able to dedicate their entire life for krishna give their life property family you know wearing sanyas robes still even even though they are in their very late years still going around the world to spread the krishna conscious movement right it's all because of the purity of roba and again those disciples are inspiring more disciples and they will inspire further down so it's a it's a parampara like that yeah please read all living entities 
in different statuses of life within the material creation beginning from the first demigod brahma down to the small ant are conditioned under the law of material nature or the external energy of the supreme law yeah please read from the living entity in his pure state is conscious of the fact that he is part and parcel of the lord but when he is thrown into the material world on account of his desire to lord it over material energy he becomes conditioned by the three modes of material nature and thus struggles for existence for the highest benefit mm. yeah the struggle for existence is something like the following the will o wisp under the spell of material enjoyment all plants for material enjoyment either by worship of different demigods as described in the previous verses of this chapter or by modernized advancement of scientific knowledge without the help of god or demigod are illusory only for despite all such plans for happiness the condition living being within the compass of material creation can never solve the problems of life namely birth death old age and disease no matter what you do you cannot solve these four problems by yourself one has to surrender to the supreme lord and uh, take shelter of his bona fide uh, devotees right so that's the only way so whatever plan making you can do you will lose everything at the end of his life whether you are a rich man or poor man doesn't matter yeah this is yanti deva vrata deva patrin yanti patri vrata bhutani yanti bhute jya yanti madhya jito pimam so worshippers of demigods reach the respective planets of demigods and the worshippers of forefathers reach the planets of forefathers so the gross materialist remain in the different material planets but the devotee of the lord reach the kingdom of god yanti mat jati yajino pima those who worship me will come to me so based on worship one reaches different uh, destinations uh, gross materialist will remain in the material world because he is still full of desires yeah please read from this one therefore unless the gross materialist or the worshippers of the temporary demigods come in contact with a transcendental list like the pure devotee of the lord their attempts are simply a waste of energy only by the grace of the divine personalities the pure devotees of the lord can one achieve pure devotion which is the highest perfection of human life only a pure devotee of the lord can show one the right way of progressive life otherwise both the materialistic way of life without any information of god or the demigods and the life engaged in the worship of demigods in pursuit of temporary material enjoyments are different phases of pathas magoria ventas magoria mm. yeah so whether you are worshipper of demigod or just a simple materialistic person as long as you are in the pursuit of temporary material enjoyments they are all illusory phantasmagoria means imaginary happiness it's not real happiness yeah so only escape way is getting in touch with a pure devotee of the lord so we are we should be very we should feel very fortunate that you know we are all we all came in touch with pure devotees of lord You know, especially Prabhupada, so we should be very grateful for that fact. Otherwise, our life would be very different. Correct? You would yes. have just continued your journey of material life in this life, in the next life, and next life, and next life. So there is no escape. So we got that opportunity. So we should, we should take benefit of it. Take. the best use of the bad bargain when the we still have material body we can achieve the highest in this because because of the opportunity we have so we should not misuse that we should not misuse by uh, you know neglecting or 
you know offending devotees or uh becoming you know too familiar and ignore right so we should not make our devotion service mechanical even though over a period of time we become very slackened correct uh, we know we know we, we have to chant we uh you know we go to temple and festivals and do some service so over a period of time we slacken this is the biggest problem hmm? we should be ever sincere always you know in that spirit of gratitude to the lord always in that spirit we really relish bhakti and uh, you know always try our best to please the lord so in that way we will be protected and you know achieve our goal otherwise you know we practice like everybody else and uh, it's like one more thing in our life and uh, time will pass no every year we are getting older one year closer to death already spent 40 years so 40 some 50 like that so we have very short time we are already crossed 50% of our life right after 70 is all you cannot really count that you don't know whether you will live also so we are already crossed 50% of our life and uh, we only have like say hardly 25 30 years good life maybe if you live till then so we should make the best use of this short period we have uh in this infinite existence of soul 25 years is like a flash but if we don't use that for proper purposes we miss the opportunity to escape from this cycle in which we are stuck for millions of years so it's like sometimes we get that opportune moment right in a window of like say you get the opportunity to say shake hand with prime minister for 2 seconds human lifetime is like the 2 seconds especially after coming in touch with krishna consciousness is like that opportune moment otherwise this you know you have lived millions of lifetimes and you may continue to live millions of lifetimes after this life this 25 30 years is your chance to get out of it so if we don't use it we lose it that's the stakes ज्ञानम यद आप्रतिन्वित्रा गुणोर्मि चक्रम ज्ञानम यद आप्रतिन्वित्रा गुणोर्मि चक्रम आत्मा प्रसाद उत्तयत्र गुणेश्वरसंघवा आत्मा प्रसाद उत्तयत्र गुणेश्वरसंघवा कायवल यसमत पतास्त्व अथभक्ति योगा transcendental knowledge in relation with supreme lord hari is knowledge resulting in the complete suspension of the waves and whirlpools of the material modes such knowledge is self satisfying due to its being free from material attachment and being transcendental it is approved by authorities who who could fall to be attracted hmm. transcendental relation uh, transcendental re- knowledge in relation with supreme lord hari means knowledge about uh, activities past times of the supreme lord guna rupa leela these things of the supreme lord uh, yeah so when you hear those past times about of the supreme lord or his devotees at that time you are fully suspended from material existence like right now we are hearing bhagavatam when we are hearing bhagavatam means we are at that time we are 
you know, liberated actually. So that's what is mentioned. Hari, you know, transcendental knowledge in relation with Supreme Lord is knowledge resulting in the complete suspension of waves of waves and whirlpools of material modes. So whirlpool of material mode means material modes are you know binding us from morning till night. But when we are hearing the transcendental knowledge of the Supreme Lord, the sweet pastimes of the Lord, the gunas and uh, and characteristics of the Supreme Lord, material whirlpool is suspended temporarily. It does not influence us. Hmm? Such knowledge is self-satisfying. Right? Krishna's pastimes are always sweet, right? nectarian. How many other times we hear, we still want to hear. So due to it being free from material attachment and being transcendental, it is approved by the authorities. Who could fail to be attracted? Hmm? So nobody will be, uh, nobody will find it not attractive. Even people who are liberated, what to speak of ordinary people, even the people who are liberated are attracted to it. For example, Sukadev Goswami. Yeah, Sukadev Goswami was a uh, liberated person at the time of his birth. But as soon as he heard the pastimes of Lord from his father Vyasadeva, immediately he was fully attracted. And who else is the examples? Other examples who are attracted, who are liberated? Liberated. Huh? Four Kumaras. Hmm, Chatush Kumaras. So as soon as they smelled the uh, Tulasi from the lotus feet of the Supreme Lord, you know, Sankshobam. So there is a revolution in their heart. The heart got churned and bhakti was produced and they were crying out of love for the Lord as soon as that, as soon as they smelled the lotus feet of the Lord, the tulsi from the lotus feet of the Lord. So bhakti is transcendental and nobody will be, you know, nobody can say they are not attracted. So we'll end the class here. Any other questions? We we'll discuss during the class. Okay. Uh, then we can end the class here. Thank you all very much. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. I, I want to share one uh, very happy news, Prabhuji. Mm -hmm. uh, like... Uh, on Badrapada Purima, mm. one of my colleagues, she like just one day before she told, You do you want to get Bhagavad, Srimad Bhagavatam from me? Mm. So I told yes. And then she asked me to come to temple. I was essentially thinking it's just a small book, but mm. I got 80 volumes from Prabhuji. So it was really, really very happy and like blessed moment, Prabhuji. Actually, last week I could not join, I could not tell. So really want to share. And actually, uh, it's so huge. I don't know how God only should give energy to <laughs> read that one. So uh, I started with the like I put out, put to like in my mandir and then started reading the introduction part. Mm. So daily while doing puja, two or three pages. Very so, good. Please continue reading every day. Nityam Bhagavat Seva. If you read every day, uh, all auspiciousness will be in your life. And all blessings of Lord will be in your life. So thank you, Prabhuji. Somebody really. And if I, any Prabhuji. rule or something, I I started reading like like after doing puja every day. I'm reading Prabhuji. Is there any other thing we have? To... Yeah, I, that is fine. I mean, there is no, uh, like there is no restriction about reading. Uh, as I mean, if you are ideally, you should take bath before reading Bhagavatam. If you touch to touch the book, yeah. So that, that's yeah. A, other than that, yeah, you can definitely read. So, very good. Yeah. Continue reading every day. Thank yes. you, Prabhuji. Yeah. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.